Sergey, welcome to the Honey Badger Diaries. Thank you. You made it. It must be a highlight in your life to finally be on the show. Uh, yeah, uh, it's <laughs> been a dream. Uh, uh, happy to be here. You are in uh, Sweden. You're in Stockholm, or no? Are you somewhere else in Sweden? Yeah. Stockholm? Um, yeah. Sweden has been making name uh, internationally, I think, for being a country or the country with the most relaxed approach, or at right. least a very relaxed approach. Is this, would you agree with this? Is this a good? Uh, oh, my connection is unstable. Are you still hearing me? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll ignore that. I hear you with some choppiness sometimes. Yeah, I had it as well. Okay, we'll ignore that. And I, I'll cut this out for at least for the podcast version. Uh, yeah. Sweden has this uh, image for being super relaxed. Is this, tell me, tell, tell me about this. Is this accurate? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, uh, um, it, it is, uh, by, by any measure, uh, it is uh, the most uh, uh, relaxed and they generally work more with strongly worded recommendations uh, and not uh, uh, criminalizing uh, things, but even, even the recommendations uh, like are much more relaxed than in, in other countries but what are the uh, what are the rules right now are, are, there are some extra rules or no or none at all you'll laugh <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, we're not supposed to have events with more than 50 people um, and uh, uh, there is uh, since uh, two days ago uh, strict uh, ban on visiting uh, old folks homes uh, mm. there was now it's for the, for the kids, but then they said that they can have football tournaments for the kids. Now nobody knows what the situation is with the football tournaments for the kids. Yeah, it's a little bit unclear. Many things are a little bit unclear, uh, but. Uh, the government line is uh, sort of uh, that uh, to stay home and, uh, and uh, to keep the distance. Uh, and they were a little bit resistant in, in the beginning to the whole work from home thing. Um, uh, but then they changed their mind and said, yeah, that's probably a good idea if people work from home. Um, but it's not, but only if the workplace allows it and it works. Something. It's like, it's a little bit back and forth and not always super clear. Right. Just one question yeah, on the on the site, which I'll also cut out, except for the YouTube watchers. They'll they'll get this bonus content. But um are you having any apps open that have taken up a lot of bandwidth or something maybe? Or is this just the best we can do be, because it is a little bit shocky? If if this is the best we can do, this is the best Sorry, we can do. Sorry, I don't know if it's you're lagging or me. Yeah, it's almost lagging. Yeah, we have a we have a bit of a internet issue, I think. Can you repeat? What's that? Yeah, uh, I'm a bit on the out on the uh, on the countryside in the family uh, country house. Yeah, uh, but repeat the last question. No, I, actually, I was asking about the internet connection. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, it's maybe it's usually good, uh, but yeah. Okay. Well, if this, if this is as good as it gets, uh, we'll have to work with that. Um, Right. Yeah. Okay. So no, uh, no events of more than fifty people, and then you were mentioning that uh, people can't visit old homes, uh, old folks' homes yeah. anymore. And then there's yeah. some discussion about football tournaments. Is that what you said? Yeah, something like that. Uh, like uh, if the kids should be doing sports and what kind of sports and so on. Uh, and the schools are open up until ninth grade. Right. Yeah, so high that's schools are closed and so on. Right. So that's the regulatory part of it. And then you mentioned yeah. there is also that vice part of it, basically. Well, I mean, uh, I think, uh, like from what the, I don't know, the, the communication is that uh, to stay home if you're sick. If you have any types, types of symptoms of being sick, you should stay home. Uh, and they repeat that, uh, like, uh, in a, 
uh, there is this like daily press conferences, but only weekdays. Uh, um, there's a daily press conferences, and they're always like uh, it's a little bit weird because it's always like yeah, a bunch of people died, uh, no real news. Uh, uh, remember to stay home if you're sick. So they're really like hammering down and, and taking the approach of like uh, take three really simple things, like really really fucking simple things, and then hammer it down. Uh, and uh, uh, and yeah, and the the reception has been it's a little bit. I think it's it's strange in Sweden because part of society that are working in tech and so on, we're you know following the developments in other countries. We're following the discussions on uh, on, on the internet from from other countries. We uh, like when the Silicon Valley uh, company said that they were going to mandate working from home, and then the next day, basically all the tech companies in Sweden said the same thing. Yeah, but uh, uh, and at that time, uh, the official line was that uh, it was uh, uh, it was not good from an equality standpoint that some people could work from home while others couldn't. Uh, that was uh, the message. Um, but then it changed, and they said no, it's probably better if you can work from home to stay to stay home. Yeah, but it's been a little bit uh, like that, and then there's like uh, there's a political rift in the country that is different from previous rifts, I guess, in the sense that there is, uh, there, there is, I mean, the majority of Sweden is supporting the government more than ever. Uh, and we, we need to be, uh, 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 I, I'm not in that group, but, uh, but, but it is the majority view, like the, the prime minister is more popular than ever. Uh, he was never very popular, but he's, <laughs> he's the popular as it's ever been. Um, and uh, and uh, Sweden is generally a country with high level of trust, uh, both in uh, trust in the government and the institutions, and vice versa. Uh, and so a lot of people they you know just assume that what they're hearing from the government is the best uh, that there could be, and there is no this is no time to be questioning uh, anything. Uh, and if uh, our government said this, but all the other countries in the world said something else, then uh, our government knows something that nobody else knows, and and, and nobody asks uh, what that is. Yeah. So if, uh, and there's like you know we're different. You know how are we different from Norway? Uh, you know uh, we have this tradition. Of this. I I don't know. Uh, there there is some type of. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's hard to say. Uh, and there is also uh, uh, like a lot of people going. You know, it's become like a funny mantra of like trust the experts, right? Uh, and like you shouldn't be a hobby epide epidemiologist, uh, which is fair. But nobody uh, that I know is a hobby epidemiologist. Everybody is just you know, hey, there's epidemiologists from other countries, and also a good section of the ones in Sweden that think that uh, what we're doing is very risky and, and putting um, many people's lives in danger. Um, and uh, so there, then there is a discussion uh, among that. And, and, the, and the, the rift is not along any usual political lines, uh, mostly. You know, there is a bit of like, I think in the beginning, some of the people that were uh, screaming about this whole uh, situation were uh, were uh, like domestically were like thought leaders a little bit more to the conservative side, uh, and so uh, for a while there was like uh, there was a thing that they like are you the corona right, <laughs> uh, the fear mongers uh, of the corona right? Uh, they're screaming about this. It has changed a little bit, uh, and right now it's it's not like I wouldn't say that it's along the usual lines that people are split. It's more like some people are that are like blindly assuming that the government uh, and the authorities cannot uh, cannot be wrong by definition uh, and some other people that are like uh, you know what I, I want to know <laughs> uh, I want to know what the, the reasoning what the thinking and, and there, there hasn't yeah. been that much transparency which traditionally like Sweden is, is a very high transparency society you know you can you can type in anybody's name and get their address and uh, uh, how much they made last year and uh, what car they own and like all of that info is like relatively public in Sweden, and it's a very transparent society. And if they've been uh, convicted of crimes and uh, everything like that, yeah. But in this case, uh, there was like 
budget scientists, for example, wrote the, uh, what do you call it, the petition uh, for like uh, demanding that the government releases uh, the, like the basis for their models and estimates that they've been using, and there was like nothing came out of that. For example, well, not nothing, but they they said that they're going to assign a new committee with some externals, but who is in that committee? Nobody knows. Uh, what's being discussed, nobody knows. And and, uh, and so there's this li a little bit strange situation uh, going on. And it's also, I think, been, like in the beginning, there was a lot of downplaying uh, of the danger. Uh, and I think that it didn't, like, if we start from, like, from the top, like, the, like, at first, it was the question of, is it safe? This was like in January. Is it safe for Swedish people to go to Thailand over the winter? And there was a small debate around that. Um, and then when this, just when it started uh, exploding in northern Italy, there was uh, a spring break uh, in Sweden uh, in the middle of second part of February. And a lot of Swedes like to go skiing. And they go to the Alps and some of them went to the Italian Alps. Uh, and there was a big question as well, is it safe for Swedes to, to go to the Alps? And then there was a clear message from the government uh, uh, epidemiologist that yes, it is absolutely safe. There is absolutely no risk uh, of uh, any Swedish citizen getting the, uh, the disease. Uh, and then when they started coming back from, uh, from the spring break, uh, it became evident that uh, many of them uh, were infected. Uh, and then it started, you know, this whole, should we be quarantining them? That didn't happen, uh, and then uh, you know it was always like a little bit one step uh, behind um, the events. Uh, at first, there was uh, uh, no quarantining. If they have symptoms, we will test them, uh, and then we're gonna trace uh, their contacts. And, uh, they assumed that it would only spread among the families, but then it didn't only spread among the families. Uh, and then at some point there was society, like broad society spread, and then uh, they kind of like okay, then let's g give up on the contact tracing and uh, and just work with mitigation and basically. Um, so it's been like a little bit some stuff like that. There was also this uh, like uh, the story about herd immunity that at first was like a rumor that circulated uh, on Facebook. Uh, because pe many people were afraid of like posting it uh, on their walls for some reason. Uh, that it was actually like an, uh, an article written by the ex uh, government epidemiologist that uh, you know yeah, the Swedish strategy is simply to get everybody infected and try to uh, well, not to get everybody infected, but like to make sure that people get infected in an orderly manner that there is no way of preventing it. Uh, and uh, to protect the uh, protect the elderly uh, from the infection and, and and flatten the curve basically, but there was no sort of let's try to you know try to do what South Korea did or you know, stuff like that, which is what some people uh, uh, have been calling for and to some extent still are. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's it sounds pretty similar to the Netherlands, I would say. All in all, we also have this culture where people pride themselves on being sober and somehow we're more sober than people in other parts of the world and uh, our experts are better and, and you're supposed to just listen to them. And, and also our prime minister is more popular than ever, it seems. Um, but yeah. But how's it been? Uh, can I ask you, how's things been uh, over there in the past week or so? Like I've been seeing some scary numbers from... Uh, it, it, it seems like we're now getting to the point where people start to care a bit more and they or at least it looks that like that in the past you know 10 days or something where they were getting uh there was some information is coming from hospitals that they were concerned that they weren't that they were going to buckle under the load and there were there was some more criticism on the experts and uh and one of the things that i thought was very interesting was that people which i liked actually was that people were uh taken more measures than uh, required by law, so to say. Yeah. So people were staying at home more than the law told them they had to, and they were doing more social distancing. And I, I haven't seen many masks yet or, or anything like that. Some, it's, it's, it's sort of starting to come, but not a lot. But I was definitely getting the impression that there was 
that awareness was raising and people started to care a bit more and started to question a little bit more what was actually going on. But just yeah, now, it's I, I, here. I wanted to, uh, I've been seeing like all sorts of drone pictures of totally empty streets and these kinds of things in the Netherlands, but also in other countries, of course. And I was curious to, uh, I, I haven't been out of my own street for like three weeks and today I thought, you know, I'll take a scro- stroll through town and see all these empty streets. But it was just full of people. It was it was busy out. So I don't know what's going on anymore exactly what people maybe were already past the point that people cared and now they don't care anymore. Or it was just uh I mean it was nice weather today, so maybe it was more busy than usual or so it's hard it's to really, uh, it's, uh, it's busy. People go to the parks, uh people go to restaurants, especially like uh, yeah, the weird thing is, restaurants are open. They have some like requirements uh, for for distancing, but they are open. Uh, it's like the restaurants that were super fucking popular, like the ones where you have to you know wait three months uh, for us for a reservation. Like, they are still full. <laughs> They're packed. Uh, but all of this, uh, you know, uh, probably don't don't need to wait three months. Uh, whereas uh, the less popular uh, restaurants, they're all really, really struggling and, uh, and, and empty. But but yeah, it's a little bit like that kind of stuff is a little bit weird seeing when you walk around town. Um, so what is in Sweden, what's the situation in Sweden for in like in hospitals and is that's that's also growing I think right now. Yeah, so there were there was a warning a couple of days ago that uh, this weekend. So Stockholm is overrepresented. So half of all the Swedish cases are in Stockholm. Uh, and then there's a couple of other count- counties with uh, many cases, but the rest of Sweden is relatively uh, less uh, impacted so far. Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, 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 hospitals, yes, there was a warning. And they're building, you know, they have an exhibition hall that is huge that they're now rebuilding into a hospital, similar to how they're doing in other countries. And they've, I think, done uh, hard for me to assess, but they they, they seem to be working hard at the uh, growing capacity, and uh, it hasn't been overrun yet. But there was a warning that it might happen this weekend or early next week, and so now people are uh, a little bit starting to be scared of this thing. And uh, there is, uh, uh, yeah, um, th- there is also this. W- there was this uh, weird uh, situation with. Uh, uh, the doctors went on a protest because uh, there's been a shortage of uh, of materials like protective uh, equipment, and uh, uh, and then uh, uh, the the health authorities changed the recommendations, uh, right, uh, for which uh, equipment they should be using and which cases, and it kind of just coincided with that they should be using a little bit less of the equipment that there was in a shortage. And, uh, the, and the, there was like a big protest uh, among uh, the doctors, and they were like on the news uh, saying that you know we refuse, uh, we refuse to work, and 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 that's like probably like first time that like, somebody actually like goes against uh, the government in such a clear, uh, clear way, and and the doctors are because you know you're not supposed to question uh, question the experts, right? And the doctors are not questioning the experts. But they're also saying that they're refusing to work uh, following the recommendations, and they can't say why, right? Because they can't really say that we, we don't trust it with our lives. <laughs> but that's between the lines. That is what they're saying, uh, and, and and that's uh, like yeah. Uh, currently, where like where where we are, I think a little bit. Like yeah, we we had something like that with testing, where in one hospital they decided to more do more tests than the official guidelines would allow and that became sort of a national discussion on testing and to what extent these rules should be broken or whether the rules were good like that was one of the first time that the official guidelines were questioned i think like yeah. on, a, on a big scale How, how's the testing situation in sweden is it sh- short on tests like everywhere or yeah, yeah they, they don't have enough to test uh, the healthcare workers um, and so uh, a lot of them are staying home you know, because of precaution and um, 
and this is like the latest thing is that there's been a lot of uh, a lot of cases in old folks homes uh, and uh, even though there wasn't a formal ban there was a strong recommendation for set for many weeks that you're not supposed to visit them and supposedly it's been enforced uh, but still uh, currently a third uh, of all old folks homes in Sweden have corona now um, or some cases of it, but uh, so now the question is like, how did it get there? <laughs> you know, if uh, if the staff stayed home and they were sick and they did all the things and yet got there, uh, and so now I think in the past, just like end of this week, uh, the tone has changed uh, in in the news. Like uh, for the first time, the journalists have started asking critical questions uh of uh of the government and of the experts and sort of like how could this happen you know like this was uh, the one thing that would, like everybody agreed that we, let's make sure that uh, uh, the elderly don't get infected and they did um and and so now i think there's been like now there's they're like acknowledging a little bit that yeah maybe there is some like asymptomatic uh, spread or pre-symptomatic or um, and that maybe it makes sense to uh, even uh, maybe it, it makes sense to use more protective gear and maybe even for people to wear wear masks it says still a little bit. Uh, but I think it'll get there if uh, if the Americans said to do it, and I think Sweden's going to follow. Um, right, but not yet. There's no masks. No, in. Not yet, and especially they they said in the past they said that it might actually be dangerous to wear masks. Uh, so. Yeah, it's a pretty big thing for them to back away from. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know, like from my perspective, it's strange that they're not using, following the precautionary principle, you know, uh, and simple principles. If you wear a mask and you're wrong and it's useless, you wasted some effort, but if it didn't help, then... <laughs> yeah, especially uh, for know, these kinds of things. Like, I, I, I see an argument when there's big economic co consequences, but for things like a mask, yeah, exactly. there's really no harm in just wearing one until you're sure it doesn't work. Yeah. What is the economic situation uh, like in, in Sweden? Is, is it being hit hard or...? Yeah, uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, everybody working in hospitality tourism events uh, they're shutting down uh, everybody's getting fired and there's uh, government programs and stuff but uh, you know it's probably not enough and it's mostly loan based and many entrepreneurs are saying like i, I don't want to take loans if uh, i don't know if you know will will my business exist in a year i don't know uh, i don't want to be in debt and uh, so yeah a lot of people have been fired uh, uh, already and there's, we're still, I think, I think a little bit everywhere waiting for like the secondary wave of the supporting industries of the industries uh, that are being impacted. Yeah, uh, that are probably gonna gonna start. So like, I don't know if the economy in Sweden is. It would be interesting uh, to uh, to see somebody do uh, research on like if the economy is actually doing better than the economy in other countries that had more strict measures. I, I don't know. I have a hard time seeing it. Maybe a little bit, but uh, uh, it's still, you know, for for these businesses, it, I don't know if it matters much if they have ten percent of the revenue or uh, or thirty or or zero. Like they don't have that kind of margin, so it's difficult for them. Yeah, and and it's probably too soon to say, anyways. Like we'll get because some some of the countries with the stricter measures are now getting back to work, while in Europe we might be in a sort of a slump for who knows how long or yeah. not but um uh, yeah it's kind of hard to say but uh, a lot of people when they hear of sweden they think of this as a like a socialist paradise almost so i, I would assume people are at least getting helped if they get in trouble right They're, they don't end up on the street well not yet no i mean uh, sure and they're trying a different way with different unemployment benefits and all kinds of like there's they're doing a lot of uh, stimulus programs of all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, ways, especially to help people. So no, I don't think people are going to end up on the streets, but uh, a lot of people are losing their jobs. Uh, and uh, uh, that's uh, especially young people and, uh, and so on. So no, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say if it's more bad than in other countries or, um, yeah.
How's how's bit refill doing now? Is is everyone ordering from home with vouchers? Well, uh, we just uh, closed the, the month of March. Uh, uh, we're, we're doing okay. Uh, our travel gift cards are not selling so well these days. Um, <laughs> um so uh but on the other hand we're selling a little bit more of uh, the game uh, segments uh which makes sense i guess um that's a are, world uh, health organization advice now right gaming is good exactly exactly um so uh you know uh, bitcoin took a dive and so on so like march wasn't a great month for us but like we're we're fine uh, especially compared to how, how things are for a lot of people um uh, we're fine we're we're not uh, planning any type of downsizing uh, yeah <laughs> in any you, foreseeable future how do you um, think bitcoin is gonna fare under all of this do you, do you think this is when it's gonna prove itself as a safe haven or is it gonna fail? What's I it? I always think that, right? So you, you need to disclaim uh, that I, I I will I will think that everything is always good for Bitcoin, um, uh, but I think specifically I think on the macro thing, like uh, with all of the governments printing money and trying to print similar amounts of money so that all currencies lose value at the same time, um, it becomes easier to explain the value of Bitcoin, that they can't just print more. Uh, and I uh, I think it will do reasonably well. It has done reasonably well. Under the circumstances, I, I would say that uh, it's done pretty fucking well <laughs> uh, to, to only drop uh, as much as it has. Um, but I also think, and this is my own personal hunch, is that I think that if a lot of people, if we're gonna have a recession, uh, which I think is the reality, and a lot of people are going to lose their jobs and stuff like that. I think that there's going to be a, a lot bigger cash-based economy. You know, like uh, people doing. I'm already noticing that uh, among some people that were, you know, I, I would have called it at least middle class <laughs> up until recently. That suddenly, you know, your work is gone. Your company is gone. <laughs> it's, it's not there anymore. And then, you know, people starting to do little jobs here and there. Uh, you know, a little gig here, a project there, and so on. And my hunch is that the cash-based economy is actually going to to come back a little bit and become more politically accepted. Uh, that you know, if uh, it's one thing, if uh, uh, if uh, it's uh, like uh, if it's the bottom of society doing it. Uh, uh, then it, it can be looked down upon. But if it's like, you know, more than half of society and everybody knows somebody uh, who, who's, uh, uh, you know, participating in, in that. Uh, yeah. To be clear, that the, the connection you're seeing there is that basically it would be more of a black economy, a hustle economy. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it already is. I mean, the gig economy is, uh, to my understanding, somewhat... Uh, it's like you're supposed to report your own taxes, but you know, do they? Re- I don't know. Uh, I'm not the expert here. So, but my intuition is that we're going to see more of that. And um, yeah, I think that in such a world, uh, there is a case for uh, for Bitcoin. Well, uh, especially and, as cash is as cash is disappearing. It's disappearing here a lot now with the virus. A lot of stores aren't accepting cash anymore. And I think in Sweden, you were already there, basically, no. Yeah, the, the cash is very rare, but that's the thing. It's like I'm, I have a feeling it it might come back. Uh, we'll see. Um, but that's my uh, my own uh, guesstimate. Yeah. Do you have any Do you have any connections at your central bank? Because it's it's time to uh, give Satoshi this Nobel Prize, right? Well, right. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Uh, why would a central bank give a prize to Satoshi? Like, uh, um, actually, uh, put in a good word for him. They actually are somewhat, uh, or they used to be at least active in the local crypto scene, like showing up to events and stuff. Uh, and they had this project for the electronic Corona, which I think they're still working on, but like they're working on it with Accenture. And, uh, right. it's, it's, probably nothing's going to come out of it, but. Uh, um, but they are like active, and uh, I guess they, they have a little busy times these days. Uh, but uh, 
They're bi- they're busy printing money. Yeah, well, I'm not even sure if they are printing so much money here. Uh, yeah. I don't really know what they're doing. Like the kind of interest rates are at zero anyway, and uh, yeah, they're trying in different ways, uh, like everywhere, I guess, to to get the economy circulating again and, and make sure the real estate market doesn't doesn't drop so that people don't end up uh, on the streets, stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Any final words before we make an end to this? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. I mean, uh, uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, I guess just that may- maybe my my perspective is probably not uh, not representative of uh, of the majority of uh, the citizens of this country. <laughs> I guess uh, should start and open uh, and uh, open and close with that. Yeah. Um, well, then take. Uh, you're you're staying home. Is that your uh, policy or? Well, I mean, we closed the office uh, and so on, but most of us are remote anyway. But yeah, uh, we're we're working from home. Uh, but like now, we, we drove out to the to the country house and we went out for a walk and so on. And when we're home, we go out for walks and go to the stores and so on. Uh, you know, but uh, sometimes have guests over, but not in big groups. And uh, yeah, something that, that kind of level, I guess. All right, Sergey. Thanks for uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for being on. Thank you too. Cheers. Cheers.